Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on vectors and how to perform operation with vectors. So let's take a look at a vector. Here is a vector that has an initial point right here. And we're going to put an arrow right over here at the head. So this is what we call the initial point of the vector. And this is the head of the vector. Now you can denote this by using a symbol uh, such as, let's say V is a vector with an arrow right on top. That denotes a vector. Now vector has two properties. It has magnitude, which tells us the length of this vector. So this is what we call magnitude of a vector. And direction is pretty much this arrow indicates the direction of the vector. Now vectors can be given in terms of components. So for example, I can let V have uh, components in two dimension, uh, V1, and v2. So these are the components you can think of. Uh, the first point is the x component, the second one is the y component. In 3D, you can have three components of such a particular vector. Now let's go ahead and see how we can uh, perform some operations with this vector. For this particular uh, example, our initial point is this one right here. So this is our initial point of the vector, and this will be our final point of the vector. So if you're creating a vector from the point P to Q, so let's call that a vector, it's going to have the following components. So pretty much you do the final point, subtract the initial point. So we're going to have the vector uh, as follows. So let me call these point X1. This is X, um, X1, Y1, and this one X2, Y2. So my vector from P to Q would have the following component. The x component will be x2 minus x1, so final minus the initial point. And then for the y component, we'll do y2 minus y1. And then this will give us the vector p to q. So if you now plug in this particular point, x2 is 2, x1 is 1, and y2 is negative 1 minus y1, that's 3. And this will give us the vector 1, comma negative 4. So this is the vector from point P to Q. Now in three dimension, you can also do the same thing, except you're going to have now a Z component. For example, if I give you three points, let's say P has the, has the coordinate one comma three comma two, and Q has the coordinate two, negative one, and four. Now if I want to create a vector, this is in three dimensional space, so the vector from P to Q, where P is the initial point, Q is the final point, is going to have the following components. So we'll do the same thing as we did in 2D. So we'll have X2 minus X1, that'll be the X component. The Y component will be Y2 minus Y1. And this last component will be the Z component, so Z2 minus Z1. So that will create a vector in 3D. So similarly as previous problem, we can call this X1, Y1, z1 this is x2 y2 and z2 now plotting in this point accordingly we already know the first so i'm keeping the same as the previous problem we know x2 minus x1 that was one and y2 minus y1 that was negative four now z2 minus z1 that will be four minus two and that is our vector now four minus two of course we can put that in as a two so this is our vector p to q and those are the components of this vector. Now let's talk about these three operations of vectors where we have addition of vectors, subtraction, and a scalar multiple of a vector. Now, if you want to do u plus b, let's, let's take a look at a geometry of this. Um, so let's suppose this is our vector u. This is the vector u. And let's suppose this is the vector v. So if you add them, you can use this uh, parallelogram rule. So pretty much you can think of it as copying this vector and putting it right over here at the head of the vector u and also uh, copying this vector u and putting it right on, on top like this. So you create this parallelogram and u plus v is simply representing this distance right here. So this vector that you create, this is the vector u plus v. So that's one way you can remember it. 
uh, it's called the parallelogram rule, pretty much uh, explains how vector addition works. Or you can just remember, if you add two vectors, that's how the picture would look like. Now, what about subtracting two vectors? So again, let's think about it this way. So if this is my vector u, let's call this vector u. And if this is the vector v, then um, u minus v would be this vector right here. So this is the vector u minus v. Now, it's, it kind of completes the triangle as you can see it here. Now, another way to visualize this will be in the following way. So negative v, it's simply the vector negative of the vector v. So if vector v is going in that direction, negative v is going on the opposite direction. So I can simply copy that vector and paste it right here at the head of the vector u. So something like this, but I just have to make sure since it's a negative v, it's not going to be facing uh, that way. It's going to be facing the opposite way. So this will be the vector negative v. Now, when I add the two vectors, I get this right here. So this will represent u minus v. So that's the vector subtraction. Or you can also think of it as u plus negative v. So um, two ways you can interpret this uh, picture. Now the last concept is some constant, some scalar k times vector u, which which really just elongates the vector u. So for example, if u is this vector right here, now if k is a positive number, let's say five, then we can simply say it's just going to make this vector bigger. So this will be some k times vector u. Now if it's a fraction, a small number can also make a smaller. For instance, I can also do maybe um, 1 over k times vector u. Again, depending on what the value of k is. So you can enlarge the magnitude or make it smaller as well. So these are three things we can do with vectors. Now let's take a look at some examples. Now let's take a look at this example. So we're going to consider these two vectors. This is in 2D because it has two components for each vector. So we're going to do vector u plus vector v. So pretty much we're going to take vector u, which is, has the component 3, negative 2, and add to the vector v, which has the component negative 2, comma 5. So you're going to add them component-wise. So x component and x component, we're going to add them up. So 3 plus negative 2, that's 1. The y components, we also now add them up, negative 2 and 5. That's going to give us 3. So that is the vector u plus v. So you make sure you draw these bracket like that. Now for the vector u minus v, we'll do the same thing, but we're going to subtract their components. So here's our vector u, that's 3, negative 2, minus the vector v, which is negative 2, comma, 5. So we'll do, we'll subtract the x component, 3 minus negative 2, so that will be 5, and then negative 2 minus 5, that's negative 7. So that is the vector u minus v. So very straightforward, nothing too difficult. And now for the last example, we're going to uh, uh, do scalar multiple of these vectors and then add them up. So we're going to do 4 times vector u. So u is 3 minus negative 2 plus 2 times vector v. That's negative 2, comma, 5. This can also be written as the vector 4 times 3, comma, 4 times negative 2. So you can write it like that. So you're multiplying each component by 4. So let's go ahead and do that. So 4 times 3, that's going to give us a 12. And the 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. So that's the vector 4 times vector u. And then for the second vector, we do the same thing. We do 2 times negative 2. That will give us the x component, negative 4. And then 2 times 10, 5, that's going to give us a 10. So there you have it. And now we add them up. So and when I do 12 plus negative 4, that's going to give us 8. So the x component of this resulting vector is 8. And then negative 8 plus 10, that's going to be 2. So this is the vector. 4 times u plus 2 times v. 
Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to find magnitude of a vector. So um, if you want to find magnitude of a vector, here's the formula you want to use. So if V has the component, let's say in two dimension, V1, V2, then the magnitude is denoted by this symbol. Sometimes we also write it as double vertical bar, just like that. And this is simply equal to the square root of the first component square plus the second component square. And then in three dimension, you add in the third component squared. Here is a vector in two dimension, and we're going to find the magnitude of this vector. So um, the magnitude of this vector v is simply equal to the square root of each uh, component squared, and you add them up. So we're going to square the first component plus the second component squared. And this is equal to the square root of 2 squared, that's 4, plus 4 squared, that's 16. And this is equal to the square root of 20, which uh, you can leave it here, but let's go ahead and simplify. This is 2 square root of 5. So that's the length or the magnitude of this vector. All right, so this is it for our vector introduction. I hope this helped.